and we're live. Hello, hello, and welcome to Marketing Amid Corona, your daily digest of marketing during COVID-19 outbreak. Today, we have an agenda that is short and sweet. We'll have our product marketing director sharing what he's been hearing in conversations with industry analysts. We'll also have some tips on how to measure campaign effectiveness and why it's so important to do so in these times. Um, but before all of that, here are some headlines. So the first piece of content I'd like to share with you today is a collection of first responses by brands to the COVID-19 outbreak. Um, these were captured and curated by um, Planning Dirty. They're an online agency for strategic planning. Let's take a look at a few of the examples here. By the way, they have hundreds of examples broken down by industries. So beverages, automotive, FMCG, um, insurance, online entertainment, um, restaurants. Let's take a look at retail here. Um, Nike, they dropped new coronavirus ad campaign after closing stores in selected countries. I'm sure you all saw this, play inside, play for the world. If you ever dreamed of playing for millions around the world, now is your chance. Play inside, play for the world. Another interesting example here by, Re by uh, IKEA Spain, sorry. They urge customers uh, to practice social distancing with a home loving campaign. We all probably know how heavily Spain was impacted. Let's take a look at this video. Yo soy tu hogar y voy a estar para ti, aguantando todo lo que venga. Yep. So hopefully, um, you know, skimming through these examples um, and these resources, you can have you can, you know, have um, a better understanding of the market and get some inspiration and ideas on how to craft your own uh, responses to the current situation. Next up. Chain Store Age. Um, Chain Store Age have quoted a Nielsen report on categories that have been positively impacted by the vir virus outbreak. Um, big fan of data here, so let's take a look at a few uh, interesting uh, stats. Um, we can see here that um, bath and shower wipe sales climbed 145%. Makes sense. Um, dried beans proved a popular food item, increasing 3.7x. And what I found most interesting is spiral hams, um, a traditional meal for the upcoming Easter holiday. That The sales of that item went up 6.2x. Um, action items here, not sure there are any, but uh, maybe try to craft campaigns around uh, these holidays coming up and other things or other items that are currently peaking. Um, yeah, maybe that could be an action item. Um, next up, a uh, less optimistic uh, article here. Um, so on Forbes, uh, nearly every industry has been negatively impacted by the disease and businesses that are losing out on cash have started laying off workers. Um, here you can find a list of tons of companies uh, across the U.S. that have laid off, um, la laid off employees and the amounts also broken down by industry. Um, just uh, one example here, high-end clothing rental service, Rent the Runway, laid off all retail employees across the country. Um, action item here is, um, hopefully you're not, but if you are planning layoffs, uh, this might be a useful resource to plan your volumes and benchmark against other brands. So the only thing that we can be certain about these days is that they're uncertain. Um, on top of being as creative as we can, in such times, most of us tend to look sideways to see what others are doing. On that note, uh, Ronnie Vexelman, our Director of Product Marketing, frequently speaks with analysts as part of his job. Um, I asked him to share with us what analysts are hearing from brands they speak with nowadays. Here's Ronnie Vexelman from his beach house. Hello. 
thank you, Amit, and welcome everybody once again today. Uh, I've been having an off conversation as part of my job with analyst firm, research firm, different people who are kind of like listening to the market and seeing what marketers are interested in right now. Um, so I want to give you uh, three points that are repeating themselves in what I'm hearing from them. So the first thing is that there's a lot of companies out there that are so shrinking their budgets, but if they've had committed uh, budgets, then they're moving forward. So if you're a marketer out there and you had kind of like this plan uh, or this project that you already had committed to uh, initially, um, it could be a new technology, it could be new templates, it could be um, a new agency or anything of that. And you kind of like have that budget already uh, penciled in and you think you're going to use it um, and you're going to need that in the second part of the year, then keep on going. There's others who are doing this. Um, many companies worldwide are continuing to do these investments. And the reason is that we're seeing or we're expecting this period of coronavirus to continue for the next two or three months, but then slowly uh, things will return to normal. And you do not want to just start working on that. Um, when that time comes, you want to be ready for when that time comes. Second thing is that what's top of mind right now with marketers, and it's no surprise, is understanding consumer behaviors and state of mind, right? A lot of interest around social listening tools, a lot of interest about what are my consumers feeling, what are my consumers thinking about, and how can I communicate with them? We've seen a considerable a reduction in communications being sent out after the initial peak of the first two weeks of a uh, uh, the virus going uh, uh, global and becoming a pandemic. Um, and I think that this kind of like relates to the fact that marketers are not sure of how to talk to their customers yet. So if you're out there and you have these questions, either talk to your vendors and your providers, ask what others are doing, or if you have your own social listening tools, dig into that data and um, listen to what your customers are doing. And don't be afraid to reach out. As long as you're being emotionally intelligent, as long as you're being showing empathy, um, you should be on the safe side. The last thing is, what, is uh, what are the things that marketers are kind of like uh, dealing with in these days? So one we talked about, of course, and it's not only about what to say to your customers, but it's also when, how, you know, through what channels should I communicate with my customers and at what time? Because their day-to-day -day routines have changed wildly from what they were two, three weeks ago. Second thing is uh, what to do with your downtime. A lot of marketers um, have um, stumbled upon more time in terms of not being in the rush of the day-to-day -day of their work because their industries um, are grinding to a halt or because there's a, a certain uh, restraint from uh, sending out and creating new campaigns in these times. So, you know, good examples of what to do with this time is to dig into your data Take the opportunity to look at your customers, understand migrations between life cycles, conversion cycles, what has been working, what is not, what has been bringing the highest lifetime value uh, customers, right? And look at those reports and try to think, how could you change your strategies to be better for that? Look at your onboarding sequences. Look at your card abandonment sequences if you're in retail. Think about what are the things that um, your customers would prefer you to have and where you can improve what has been working, what has been not. And then, you know, be ready to roll that out once things go back to normal. The next thing is how do you prepare for later, right? Start thinking about what's coming after the pandemic. We always hear there's a lot of focus on how do I solve, you know, how do I sell right now? How do I market right now? But in two, three months, we will start to see a return to normalcy. Now that return will not be zero to 100, meaning that uh, the day once it's cleared, um, or once it's safer to return to go outside, people are not going to rush to restaurants, rush to stores, rush to airplanes or, or, or cruises, but they will gradually go there. And you have to think of how do you educate your customers in terms of making sure that they feel safe coming to your locations, right? Know that they, your employees are safe, that your products are safe, that your location is clean. Well, how are you going to communicate all of that to get the foot traffic back for when um, the pandemic is behind us. So think about that. And at the end of the day, again, the last point is how do you maximize your technologies? Take a good look at your stack and look at what are you not using from what exists that you can use before bringing new stuff 
um, before. I think that that's a great way to finish this and kind of like full circle going from if you're going to buy, if you were going to buy something new or, or make a change budget wise and continue to do it, but also, you know, make sure that you're maximizing what you already have and you're not bringing up additional costs for um, limited value. That's all for today. Back to you. And to our next item, our very own Gabby from Optimus product marketing team wrote a blog on how to go about your testing um, these days, how to test the effectiveness of your marketing campaigns. Um, to give you some context, um, at Optimove, we always preach about how important it is um, to keep relevant in your marketing messages. Um, but in these times, even more so, customer sensitivity levels are significantly higher. Um, so let's have a look at what Gabby had to say. Thank you. And thank you everyone who's joining us here again today. Today I'm going to discuss one of our recent blogs called ABM Testing to the Max, How to Reduce Uncertainty in Turbulent Times, or What's the Point in Testing Without Declaring a Clear Winner, which is exactly what we're proposing today. So we see that brands that are able to create positive customer experience may find they're maintaining more of their market share and even expanding it. However, brands that are sending out irrelevant and aggressive marketing communications may find that they're creating brand animosity that lasts past the coronavirus pandemic. And we as marketers already know that one of the most prominent ways to find the right message to send to our audience is to test different campaign, different treatments against each other to find, to find what works best. So typically the way that will work is that we'll create A, B, or A, B, M testing, and we'll, we'll decide on a, on a period of time, whether it's three weeks, three months, where we'll see which of the treatments generated the highest uplift and declare that one as the winner. But that brings about a number of questions. A, how often do we reevaluate re the campaigns? B, how do we maintain multiple campaigns that have different treatments within them and make sure that we're sending each of our customers the most relevant, cam the most relevant campaign to them? And we are apt to move believe that successful marketing comes from contextual, from relevant contextual communications, which is why we created the self-optimizing campaign. The way it works is that we continuously test different treatments against each other and send the most relevant communication to each one of the customers. So a few weeks ago, I was trying to, we were trying to create a graph to visualize the uplift generated by one of our clients. And what we see here is, here you see the light blue is the uplift generated with the self-optimizing campaign or continuously testing different treatments against the other, against each other. And the darker blue is the uplift that would have been generated had this client used typical classic ABM testing. And what we see here with the orange line is the optimization uplift throughout time. So we see here that at the end of the fourth period, this client achieved 31.6% higher optimization uplift than they would have had they used classic ABM testing. So I wanna share with you another recent client that we were looking at to see another interesting scenario. What we see here is another client that took one of their campaigns and used the self-optimizing campaign with it. He, treated the, he separated their audience to two different treatments and a control, which we always recommend using a control. We see that treatment A received 45% of the audience, treatment B received another 45% of the audience, and 10% received no campaigns whatsoever and remained in the control group. What we see here is that during the first two periods, treatment A is outperforming treatment B and the optimization uplift is showing the same. So we see a 16% higher optimization uplift. However, in the third period, we see a drop in the optimization, in the optimization uplift and Optimove notices that and automatically starts migrating more of the customers to receive treatment B. And we see that there is a shift and treatment B is outperforming treatment A. And at the end of the ninth period, we see that there's a 30% optimization uplift received from customers that, that were more of the customers received treatment B. What this teaches us is that customer preferences are changing all the time. And that is these changes that are becoming a lot more rapid and unpredicted during COVID-19, during the COVID-19 outbreak. I tell you about myself, I am sure you can agree that our preferences and values have changed since this started. The way we react to different marketing communications has changed. And it's really important to continuously test different treatments against each other to notice when and where these changes are happening to make sure that each of our customers is receiving the best communication that's relevant to them. So 
that's it for today from me. Thank you for joining. And to end things with a positive note, here are the funniest COVID-19 jokes um, according to Vulture. Let's have a look at a few. People born in 2020 are now 36. Let that sink. Me, can I have fun? 2020, no, me, okay. Let's see. People are like, how have you been spending the time? It's like, well, responding to texts takes 16 hours, and then after that, I try to get some rest. Meteor hitting Earth, dinosaur, oh no, the economy. And this goes on and on and on. I'll share the link. There are hilarious things here. Um, a good use of the time. Um, you know, humor is always a good way of, uh, of dealing with, um, with things. So thanks for being with us today. Um, as always, you can um, subscribe to get daily emails before we go live. Um, we'll be here weekdays, 11 a.m. Eastern time, um, which is... 3 p.m. UK time and 5 p.m. here at Israel. Sorry, that's 4 p.m. UK time and um, 6 p.m. Israel time. Thanks for being with us. Um, have a great rest of your day. Peace out.